Hi everybody, let's in this video look at how indirect taxation can be used to solve market failure. We'll remind ourselves, what is indirect taxation again? Well, it's a tax that increases a firm's cost of production, but can be transferred to the consumer via a higher price. And we're looking at using indirect taxation to solve any market failures where there is an overconsumption and or an overproduction taking place. So we're looking at negative externalities really, in production, in consumption, that is also a demerit good here. So if we take a, a negative externality in production first, I've drawn the base diagram. This diagram shows the negative externality in production as we know. What would an indirect tax, like a carbon tax here, do in, on this diagram? Well, it increases a firm's cost of production. So that means the marginal private cost curve is going to shift to the left. And a very easy way of showing that on this diagram, we'll assume the tax is perfect. So we're going to shift the MPC curve perfectly towards MSC. And we'll say that that shift has meant that the new MPC curve, let's call it MPC plus tax, is now equal to the marginal social cost. That means the new equilibrium in the market is at Q star, so we can draw an arrow here, and is at P star, we can draw an arrow there. So that clearly indicates that a shift has taken place. If you want to show the shift like that, you can do so as well. So we're assuming the tax is perfect here. Uh, hitting MSC and thus we're getting to Q star. Remembering that a tax increases a firm's cost of production, there's always the MPC curve that's going to shift to the left here. What about for a negative externality in consumption or a demerit good? Well, I've drawn the base diagram here. We're used to this diagram by now. Again, if it's an alcohol tax, if it's a sugar tax, if it's a cigarette tax, these are all common uh, indirect taxes here to deal with demerit good related market failure, where there are negative externalities in consumption. Again, it's a firm's costs of production that are going to increase. So it's the MPC curve shifting to the left. Now, what we want is in the free market, the new MPC curve to equal MPB at Q star. And that is going to occur at this point here. So our new MPC curve, we want it to cut MPB right there and we'll get to Q star. We want a parallel shift here. There's something that looks like this. Something like that. That's pretty close. And we'll call that MPC plus tax. So we can see a shift of the MPC curve to the left here, and as a result we hit Q star. So our quantity is at Q star, we can draw an arrow there to make that clear, and we've got a higher price now of P2. So there are our diagrams, that's how you would draw your market failure diagrams with an indirect tax on top to solve the failure. We can see from the diagrams that an indirect tax increases costs of production for firms, absolutely, um, the MPC curve shifts, we see higher prices and lower quantities. By doing so, we internalize the externality. That's a very important phrase here, because we know that in the free market, these negative externalities will be completely ignored, either by producers or by consumers, right? But now imposing an indirect tax, and now with higher prices, that externality is being accounted for in the price. It's being paid for. So we say the externality has been internalized. When it comes to negative externalities in production, we can say the polluter is now paying for the externality they are generating. We can clearly see that any overconsumption or overproduction issues are now solved. We are at Q star in the market, and thus allocative efficiency is promoted, and thus uh, we see a welfare gain in the market. Don't forget, though, that an indirect tax also generates government revenue. Let's show that on this diagram here. Remember how we get the government revenue? Go to the new equilibrium. The vertical distance between the two supply curves, so between the two marginal private cost curves here, is the value of the tax multiplied by the quantity being sold. And we get this box here. So this box there, that is the value of government revenue uh, for this diagram. And here, go to the new equilibrium, the vertical distance here, go across, and that will leave you a lovely box of government revenue there. And when you talk about the government revenue, Talk about it in terms of where it can be used again to further solve the market failure. You can use the phrase, this tax is a hypothecated tax, i.e. the revenue is ring-fenced, again, to further solve market failure in this case. So, what can you talk about? You can talk about the revenue being used to educate or to advertise. Um, you can talk about the revenue being used to fund alternative policies or policies in combination. You can talk about the revenue being used to subsidize alternatives. Um, if it's for a demerit good or negative externality in consumption, addiction is a problem, the revenue can be used to fund rehabilitation, right? De-addiction campaigns. So don't forget the revenue is there and that gives you another kind of chain, another analysis point of how this tax is useful in solving market failure. But there are major issues with using indirect taxation to solve market failure. 
There are many assumptions that we've made in drawing these diagrams, in analysing how the tax will solve the problem, which will not necessarily hold in the real world. The biggest one is that there might be price inelastic demand. For an indirect tax to work in reducing quantity to the social optimum, demand needs to be more price elastic. There needs to be responsiveness to the increase in price. But what if there isn't? What if demand is price inelastic, especially if we're looking down here at goods like cigarettes and alcohol and sugar? You could argue that demand is price inelastic for all of those. Uh, addiction, very few substitutes available, uh, means that demand is price inelastic. Therefore, even though price goes up, Quantity will decrease, yes, but proportionally less than the increase in price. Not enough to solve the market failure. That's an issue right there. We make a big assumption that governments have got perfect information here, and therefore they're going to set taxes at the perfect level, perfect to internalize the externality. That's a ludicrous assumption. Look at our diagrams. We've shifted MPC to perfectly equal MSC here. We've shifted MPC to get to Q-star. That assumption is a ludicrous assumption. Governments do not have perfect information. In this case, they don't have perfect information over the value of the negative externality. And therefore, they are very likely to set the level of tax wrong, not to internalize the externality. They may overtax or undertax, and there are many issues with both of those, especially overtaxing. So if they overtax, what could go wrong? Guaranteed, you're going to get black markets, right? You're going to get smuggling. And that's quite dangerous. You guarantee that pretty much if governments overtax. Uh, they'll be very burdensome on firms, some firms may shut down, they may leave the country, unemployment as a result here. Uh, if you overtax, it's going to be very regressive, hitting the poor very hard. All of these consequences link to government failure. But even if they undertax, they are not internalizing the externality perfectly. Quantity will not fall towards the social optimum. So if we're shifting MPC here, it's going to be in the middle somewhere, it's going to be in the middle somewhere there as well. Not fully internalizing the externality and not solving the market failure. We can talk about an indirect tax being regressive. What does that mean? It means this tax will take a greater proportion of the income of the poor than it will of the rich. And bear in mind that governments have a key macro objective of promoting a more equitable distribution of income. So if they overuse indirect taxation for market failure here, they could lose that objective and promote more income inequality in society, which is not what they desire at all. We've already talked about the likelihood of black markets, absolutely. Um, the cigarette black market in the UK is valued at something like £2 billion a year. Alcohol black market is valued at something like £1.6 billion a year. So, again, you're guaranteeing this. If you increase prices significantly for goods and services that people want, they will find alternative supplies. If that's in the black market, if it's smuggling, the danger with the black market is who knows about the quality of that good? Who knows about what's inside that good? Likelihood is that consumption of this is probably going to be worse for the individual than if they bought it legally, thus making the market failure worse. Add to that, black markets need policing, there is a cost involved there, very much government failure uh, ideas coming out here. Uh, bear in mind that governments lose tax revenue if there are black markets, that's not good either. Um, so black markets are extremely bad, pure government failure right here, we don't want that occurring, but we promote that when we use indirect taxation. We can add one more point, and that is that indirect taxation uh, is quite paternalistic, it's governments forcing us to do what they want, right? So they are saying that there is a problem, they are saying that we now have to pay higher prices, we have to suffer this cost, um, because they know all. It's a very paternalistic thing. And the problem with that is it impinges on individual freedom, liberty and choice. Uh, going a bit further, that's a big, big issue, especially if we don't agree that the market failure is that significant. We might not use that argument much for cigarettes and alcohol, we know the market failure is quite substantial. But maybe for other kinds of market failures, it might be something worth talking about. If you don't agree that the market failure is that significant, or there are doubts over the extent of the market failure, then an indirect tax being paternalistic, being kind of nannying uh, to society, impinging on freedom and choice, uh, when maybe they don't really know what they're doing, the government, is a nice argument to make and something that isn't necessarily desirable. So that covers indirect taxation, guys, and market failure. Nice discussion for you to go into. I'll see you all in the next video where we're going to look at a subsidy to solve market failure. I'll see you then.